Welcome out, ladies and gentlemen, to this RGL.GG Week 9 matchup of K&D versus Fast Forward. And this is shaping up to the final end of the season. Both these teams sitting at the top of the table, they pretty much have their playoffs secured. But the question is, is how high can they go? A win for either of these teams have the potential to put them in first place. K&D can put themselves that much higher, but a clean win for Fast Forward, potential upset could put them at the top of the table and secure their spot into the grand finals and their chance to win that big cheese, that money of the $1,000 prize pool. I am Sigafook out here with a rare Highlander cast with Elto to my side and Dolphin behind the scenes. How you doing out here, Elto? I'm doing good. Doing good. Looking forward to uh, looking forward to this match since, you know, these two teams had a really, really close showing the last time we saw them play each other way back in week three, I think that was. No, week two. I want to say on uh, on Swiftwater and seeing them come together now on product with uh, you know pretty decent uh, playoff seeds on the line should make this a really fun game to watch. Yeah, in week two, uh, it was September 17th is when they met. They actually, as you said, they met on Swiftwater. It was 2-1 in the favor of Fast Forward. So kids next door uh, had, uh, you know, got pulled over. But it seems like K&D has really kind of picked it up as the season went along. They started off a little bit slow, uh, but have been picking up steam Fast Forward. On the other hand, you know, they looked pretty good, but even today we were looking through some of the match, uh, some of the pregame uh, scrims, and they did not look that great. So I'm kind of curious to see what fast forward shows up here tonight. I mean, is that kind of the case? It, did KD kind of pick it up or what kind of happened there that, you know, fast forward lost the first time around, but it seems like KD is now favored. I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think going into the season, fast forward had a bit of an advantage on the other teams and that they were coming in, you know, from UGC with, nearly their full roster intact where all the players on the team, you know, have known each other. They know how to play. So they're kind of, they were operating at a higher level than I guess, comparatively, mm -hmm. whereas, you know, compared to teams like K and D and Irene who, you know, either have had changes to their rosters or are, you know, what semi new teams altogether, you know, they, they have, they have a higher potential, I guess, just if you look at the individual skills of all their players, but, you know, it probably took them some time to kind of get, get that cohesion together and one of the narratives I've been looking for is, you know, can Fast Forward kind of keep up and adapt and improve? And, you know, we saw some good adaptations out of Fast Forward last week in the cast against Irene, where, you know, they had a pretty rough first half, came together, made the second half a lot more competitive in what was one of the craziest halves of Payload I think I've ever watched. But uh, unfortunately, you know, lost that right at the end with like 20 seconds left on the clock. So no kind of fruits to show for their efforts. But hopefully we can see something happen tonight as it looks like we're going live. Yeah, so we are going live for this first half. It's going to be a best of seven first team to four round wins. It's going to be Candy starting out on red as fast forward, starting out on blue. Early out here to the mid, it's going to be Exile leading the charge for his team, getting some stickies down onto that main side as Bull is actually coming up through Valley. Finally, the team comes to join him uh, for each side. No frags going out or damage, really. It's a slow mid. Nursey getting down a little bit low. Here comes Rain, gets the sniper. If he actually focused down Nursey, he probably would have been able to get the kill as Del Dongo is going to have to retreat away, ultimately gets spawned out there. Three players down for fast forward, only two down for KV. Make that three, and even 6v6 on either side. It's Demento gets the stab on the medic, and that should open it up here for KV, potentially use that medic advantage of Scratchy leading the charge, going across the point. But it looks like they're not going to get this. Nursey is going to have to run away, and what should have been a fight for KD, it's going to be actually fast forward coming down with the first uh, midpoint. Yeah, fast forward kind of channeling what we saw them do against uh, Irene all the way back in week one on the same map. You know, it looks like they're kind of losing a fight. We see Figsy go down. We see them, you know, have those early, you know, disadvantages, but they play together. They're able to just kind of bait fast or uh, KD, excuse me, into over aggressing, then kind of collapse back on the point, take the kills that are being offered to them, and win even despite the disadvantages. Although Exile getting sniped out will kind of hurt this defense in addition to Nursey having full Uber ad. Dongo goes and tries to get space with Ghost, but gets caught out by Zakima and Obliv. Etni going down, Fallen getting some nice kills, a bomb out of rain, not going to do too much as Fest, or KD is edging this. Demento is having triple, should uh, secure them this push, and Nursey's able to take the point without having to use here, which is really big. Demento also shutting down Fallen. We see Arik in very deep on Figzy back near Cliff. Looks like she will escape with her health bar intact. So 75% uh, on her, should be coming up on Uber soon. We'll have to see how Fest Ward is going to be able to retake this point with the uh, going to be curious. Exile just getting back up now after losing his life to Eric. And so uh, it's going to be Del Dongo going in alone. Uh, unsurprisingly got caught.
caught out there. You know, it's always kind of hard to make a spy play when you don't have any support whatsoever. And so right now, Fallen actually gets uh, a snipe onto the enemy sniper. So you can see they're starting to walk forward. Demento is getting himself into position, but here comes in the Uber charge. More than likely, they're holding onto it for so long. Dixie going down to 20 HP, finally gets popped off. Nursey holding onto hers. She's going to finally pop it off, but it's a 50% better Uber. It's going to be Eric going across the point, trying to get some damage as Demento behind the scenes picked up one, as Eric picked up a couple himself. And so they're not going to lose this point. Dixie, so, so close to dying there. And so we're going to see if Fast Forward wants to try to re-engage. Uh, but it looks like they're going to wait for their response to come back up here. Yeah, just, you know, we saw that even with Fast Forward doing a really good job milking their Uber to kind of stall it. Pixie getting pretty low, but not managing to drop. You know, Nursey was just in a position where she wasn't getting pressured. So Candy was able to get that much better Uber. They took Wish out right as the Uber was fading. And, you know, without that scout, that kind of big forward pres uh, presence, they weren't able to maintain any kind of point control. Just got, you know, forced out and eventually killed down. Obliv will go down, as will Bull. Fallen still putting in work to fast forward on the top of the scoreboard right now. We'll open up this recap. Exile playing really forward on point. Gonna get knocked off, but the rest of uh, Fast Forward's flank still edging this. Looks like the cap will go down in Fast Forward's favor. Saint and Rain gonna be the trade for X though, and with two down on the uh, Fast Forward with those long spawns, Candy will take advantage of that. Ubering in on Arik, Demento's gonna drop in, take out Figzy. Fallen gets the revenge kill with a pan, but unfortunately that cap for Fast Forward will be short-lived as Candy's able to take it right back. Yeah, and Del Dongo going down once again, but that's so brutal. Figzy was at about 95%. Great timing out of KD. I mean, that's the difference between these top teams, just mere seconds. If they push just a couple seconds later, Figzy would have been have, able to have the Uber either stay alive or be able to try to defend it, but they're not wasting any time. Fast forward already rolling out from the cliff side, and I'm kind of serious. Have they been a little bit passive? I'm finally excited to see some of this aggression coming out of them. As uh, looks like Exile's gonna jump up on the rocket. A lot of damage as Rain's also down. So, you know, Rain's been dying a lot here. I've been kind of curious to see the logs after this first round to see what's going on. Uh, but here we go, Exile jumping in alone. Not gonna get anything. And uh, that kind of seems to be Fast Forward's problem right now is they just kind of are individually trying to make plays rather than trying to make plays as a team. Yeah, I would have really liked to have seen, you know, if Figzy had been able to hold on and get that Uber, how this round would be going. It looked like that would have been the one play that had really, you know, decidedly been in their favor. Figzy, now with Uber, going to be getting up on point with Wish. Not a uh, not a numbers favorable situation. Triple gets sniped out right as the Uber gets popped. It's a really big pick coming out of Space Ghost. Nursey's going to get forced back. Doesn't even have to use Uber. With five seconds, she may as well have used it. And it looks like Candy's going to be able to hold on to this point as the last kind of point Zerg rush comes in. And, uh... Time's gonna tick out and we have the first round going over to KD. Yeah, the big thing there is Nursey's not getting pressure during the Uber exchanges, so she's able to hold on to him really well. And during the suicides bomb onto Nursey, also, she's not falling for it. You know, you send in one person, her team is able to defend it. So the big thing for Fast Forward going into this round, more pressure on Nursey in coordination from their bombs, as well as working with Del Dongo instead of him going in. So here we go into this next uh, mid fight. And here we go, going in big. Nursey getting down incredibly low. Great bomb in from Rain as uh, Demento's getting himself into position. Del Dongo finally does pick up a break. They're taking down Tsukima. And the second mid-fight will go down in the favor of Fast Forward, but much more convincing this time. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the big things we've seen with Fast Forward is their ability to kind of adapt. And I don't know if it was just a good mid-fight or, you know, they bit of a slow starter last time, but they definitely pull off a lot better of a uh, fight this time. I wanted to point out to the end of the last round that despite uh, Fast Forward's or the uh, KD's kind of dominance that round, Bulls at the bottom of the scoreboard, Jacob's at the top, and when Candy's really kind of gelling, you see that a little bit different, where Jacob's, you know, maybe dying for the team a little more often to kind of open things up. Bull's doing well, so Fast Forward had been shutting down Bull, and if they're able to continue that, things will be good for them. If the Ubers get popped out, Pyro Uber, I like that. Satan's going to do a really good job stuffing it. Oblivion gets wrangled down from Exa, bringing for Spam Fest, which we didn't get to talk about, by the way. Nursey really low in pocket. Bomb comes in from Rain. Huge bomb over the top. Will take her out. Vixie gets sniped as the counter frag, though, so good job by Space Ghost able to neutralize that one out. He was pretty far back there, so looks like he was able to just kind of edge Vixie in pocket. Candy, with their shorter spawns, should have a pretty good opportunity to cap this. And yeah, Jacob getting on there. Satan in with Dongo, maybe gonna find something. Satan's all oh, gonna get the, actually, Exile will take out Tsukiba, but uh, no heavy there. Full going down again. Fallen doing a great job of denying that demo man. Still sitting on the bottom of the scoreboard, but Nursey's able to <laughs> Nursey's able to get a kill of her own. Fallen takes out Space Ghost again, but it's not gonna be enough as, uh, much as the fast forward sniper tries, KD will retake that. But lots of kills down on KD kind of extended there. Maybe we can see a quick repush from fast forward. 
I mean, it makes sense. Uh, if Del Dongo can maybe get himself in position, help get a pick to open this up. Uh, Space Wheels is currently down. I'm kind of surprised with how fast the fast forward is, uh, given that the sniper is not even to the front line yet. Del Dongo's going to get caught out there. Uh, but here we go. Wish is maybe going to get some capture time. But now, by the time fast forward is aggressing, here's the bomb in. Holy crap! Rain double bombed, uh, double rocketed onto the sniper there. And so surely this is a time you get aggressive. There's no sniper. And as I say this, Nursey goes down the in the backfield. The crits creek coming out huge. As they're picking up the frags, as soldier bombing, and he does take down the gunman in return, but Fixie's still alive. Eric does pick up one frag, but only three players left alive to defend this point. And with the heals, they will take this and the surprise crits works out in their favor. Yeah, definitely. Just, you know, something we didn't we didn't catch, but something Fast Forward has done all season is switching to that crits play. And we see in the STV stats, at least, Nursey died at 96 there. So that crit's not something either team clearly expected. And uh, pays off in dividends for Fast Forward as they're able to, you know, finally get that kill hunt to Nursey. It feels like they've been missing this entire game. And now with crits add and the clock decidedly in their favor, Scratchy going to go down, just continuing the numbers. See some Saxon from Edney. He's not going to find anything, though. Really good point presence by K&D for what it's worth. J Jacob in, going to take out Triple and Exile. So both uh, combo members down for Fast Forward. Looks like they are going to be forced back. Pixie has the crits. Going to use it on Wish. Those crit meat shots going to come in. Tsukima goes down. Space Coast. Eric and uh, the crits works. Bit of a unusual uh, recipient for that in Wish, but... You know, they get the kills. Nursey will have 100% Uber at his clock. Dips under a minute for Fast Forward, and I still have a lot of cap time. Jacob and Bull should be able to get this. Yeah, I'm we'll to see if uh, Fast Forward can repush here. Yeah, it doesn't look like they'll be able to, so losing a little bit too many players there. And I mean, that was like, it, at the end of that, they had the crits, and then Rain just bombed in, you know, at the, just the worst time. And then he got put on a 17 second respawn. You know, I think Rain is just having a little bit of an off day. It's like his bombs, Sometimes they're working, but it feels like he just needs to be timing them just a little bit better, you know, rather than just kind of constantly going in. He's going to go in again alone, gets rebuffed by Oblivion, completely shut down, and he's going to do nothing. And again, it's like these bombs aren't the worst thing in the world, but if Del Don goes into position, if you waited five seconds, you know, now you get something. Here comes a fever charge in the face of crits. It's going to be going across the point as Eric's chasing down Frags. He does pick up the Delman of Exile. Thinks he goes down too. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, you know, you, you said it you said it right, just those bombs, they're really nice. He's getting a lot of air time, he's being a really big distraction, but, you know, he's bombing in when Dildongo's on cliff. Like, normally you think, you know, the soldier going in for a bomb, Pyro's looking at him, that's when the spy comes in and taps the men right in the back, but it feels like, you know, either, I, I, I don't know who's, you know, kind of to blame for the miscommunication, but it feels like if Rain was just waiting to time those bombs a little better, maybe going in when Dildongo was there to back up on him. As Dildongo goes in, we'll take out Eric. Scratchy getting sniped out as well. Some frags going in fast forward's favor that maybe they can work off of here. No cap time yet, but uh, they will start now. Jacob going in, gets in on Fixie and takes her out. Satan not able to air blast them away. So no uh, crits, I guess, coming up for fast forward, but that might have been Uber. Yeah, it looks like that was Uber looking at the minigun on the ground. Enough frags down for KD that they can't contest. Triple's going to try to solo cap this, and it looks like KD's going to give it to him. Yeah, nice job there. Nursey going down incredibly low. Here comes a Del Dongo going for the drop stab, but not going to get it. On to Nursey as Edney's working his way up on concrete, just trying to control it. Here comes an Exile, does get the force off onto Nursey, so uh, just, they're going to lose this point more than likely. They're down a lot of players, but they at least got the force off, so they're going to have at least, you know, about a 40% advantage, and that's something they can work off of, but with only 10 seconds here, uh, they don't, I guess they don't really have time to wait for it. They just need to do a dry push and retake this right now. Yeah, quick fix out of Fixie maybe means they could get it if they get some overtime, but no one's stepping on the point. Wish and Fixie just not over there, and that's a critical, I guess, inability to commit for Fast Forward there, as KD will jump out to the early 2-0 lead. Yeah, and I, I mean, just looking at it, I mean, I was looking at the first round stats. Uh, this is just first round. Demento top fragged in the first round, nine frags. Del Dongo, one. You know, Ooh. if you look at the pick classes, Fallen had a couple more, but Space Ghost and Fallen are right there. But the, the pick classes from the Spy is really where you see that big separation. Then same thing with Rain. Rain in that first round only got one frag. So, you know, kind of two of your pick classes are basically at the bottom of the board doing nothing. And that tells me that it's not that they're bad. Obviously, Rain quality player, Del Dongo quality player, but you're also playing against quality players and they know how to counter you if you come in alone and especially if you come in during the downtime where they're like they're doing nothing but just waiting 
for you to make a play. Rain's biggest successes are happening when he's bombing during fights, when the enemy's distracted and they can't focus him fully. Uh, and, and the same thing with Del Dongo. But um, let me get some updated stat lines here. Uh, you know, what are you seeing right now, kind of as you're looking through these stats? I mean, I'm looking at Fallen Lord, 18 and five, topping the topping the board over all the KD yeah, players, huge. sitting above Oblivion actually, who was the top frag on KD, which is you know a little surprising, just Pyro being up there, meaning that you know fast forwards having advantages to work off of. This isn't, you know, after after seeing those uh, bad pregame logs, we were a little concerned that fast forward might not be able to keep up, but you know clearly they're finding advantages. This isn't like a complete shutout. We saw that round was fairly close, you know, not double yeah. overtime pretty close it's just the advantages that they're getting either they're not able to work off of them or they're just giving up you know an equal or greater amount and uh beyond that yeah you see rain four and 14 exile four and 13 nursey sitting on three and two going positive on medic which you know over two rounds is a little bit easier than you know maybe over a four game total but you know she's we, we've clearly been seeing she's not getting pressured you know one bomb out of rain got her and then the surprise crits which you know really two deaths on product in two rounds is pretty stellar for any med getting the kills too, able to prove that she's just got you know enough space and enough timing to be able to fire off those crossbows help her teammates and 1400 heals a minute really speaks to that yeah i mean even if you look at the just the deaths total uh del dongo topping the most deaths in the server with 16 that's actually why oblivion has so many frags is that um i think it's over 30 percent of oblivion's kills is from the spy alone so that's why he's doing yeah. so well is he's just killing del dongo um, you know, and the, and the thing with that is that, uh, Del Dongo's going down and then rain is also right there. So you have Del Dongo rain exile. So three people who are kind of suiciding in at different times, you know, to be able to do that. But I, I never saw a double bomb and never saw any sort of coordination on those classes. And if you look at their counterparts at six deaths compared to rains 14. So he's about half Demento's a little bit closer, 10 to 16, uh, of Del Dongo, but you know, and then Bull is kills, though. <laughs> right. It's like he's half, but it's like pretty much everybody on on KD is half, which is like easy to say. Well, you know, they're in the lead, da, da, da. but that last round was incredibly close, right? That that should be similar to each other for how pretty close that round is. But it shows you the difference is that KD is playing it slow, and they're getting the picks at the right time, and they're working off of their spy. It's picking the right time to get picks. They're not trying to force constantly. That's like the thing. I, I'm not saying like necessarily rain is like this but the thing i see with sixes players when they come in to highlander is they have this mantra of like bomb i'm a roamer i bomb 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 i make a play 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 but it's like you got to be smart you got to time it better and because else you're just going to get punished especially when you control the points so uh, you know this is every chance for fast forward to do this but as we come into the third round uh definitely this is a round that they really really need to win to get their team into it yeah, definitely. I mean, at this point, they can't go for that clean 4-0 that I think would give them the uh, the first seed going into week 10 that they needed. But yeah, Wish just going to feed in really early. Got super aggro. Maybe tried to get some kind of cheese pick. Fallen will neutralize. But yeah, Rain in again on his own. Going to get reflected by Oblivion. Frag's being traded back and forth, but it looks like it's going in K&D's favor. No, fast forwards, actually. As Bull and Space Ghost are both going to go down. So two of the major players for uh, K&D down. Nursey alone right now, actually. Kind of behind Rock. Needs back up with Obliv and Etni. Triple and Figsy still on rock for uh, fast forward. Etni will go down, so some good heavy gameplay out of triple. And it looks like we'll see another mid fight from fast forward. Satan going in is maybe a bit of a distraction. Probably didn't have to do that. Bowl back in should help kind of uh, get some more pressure and a really nice shot at a space ghost. He's going to take down Rain. I don't even know where he took that from. I guess, oh, it was on Cliff. But yeah, Uber's going to come out on both sides now, actually. Advantage to fast forward here. So we haven't really seen any bombs in behind, so he's going to be a nuisance behind this after this Uber. Zukima, Fallen, and Wish all going down in short order, and this absolute chaos continues. It looks like we have K&D with more presence on this mid, and it looks like they're finally going to take it as the uh, Etni bomb during that Uber pays off as Fixie goes down. Yeah, just a good job coming out of K&D. You know, I'm surprised they're actually able to hold on to that point, but even still, if they gave up that point, they would have been able to take it back really quickly. Nice job out of Etni also going behind, waiting for his team to kind of get some pressure, and then bombing back in. Uh, to kind of clear up Bigsy rather than if he just went in when the snipe or the soldier, sorry, the, the scout as well as the one were there. But actually, as I say this, Bull goes down. So no double man here. Space Ghost is aiming down the sideline from Valley, trying to find something. But Wish is doing a good job trying to get some capture time here. You actually should be able to get it if you pushed all the way across the point to hide from that heavy. But they're playing so passive, trying to get this free capture time that's actually punishing them. Take a bit. Oh, and he's going to take out Bigsy. 
Satan looking for him dropping down off a cliff, but he looks in the wrong spot and he's just gonna kinda drop in, take her out, and after that, you know, fast forward, he's gonna get routed. Nursey did look like she got forced off there, didn't see the what. But uh even so that will be a pretty solid add into the favor of Candy moving forward here. And I also just want to point out, De Dementa went in for the play, Jacob went in for the play, when the Uber charge came out, there's a distraction, he went in for a play, and he got a big pick. And so right now, uh, Fixies is down about 30%, Wish is starting to get some capture time on the point, uh, but we'll see what they want to do with this, as it's going to be Space Ghost picking up a uh, snipe onto Satan, and uh, yeah, it just kind of looks like Fast Forward doesn't really know what they want to do with this Jacob, plane, so up. passive. Oh, gonna come in out of spawn and catch Fixie again. Just not enough protection on her. We kind of saw this a little bit last week in that match against Irene. Faint was having a field day on her. And while they kind of tied it together in the second half, we're not really seeing that here. And one thing that I do kind of want to just bring up that I guess maybe you haven't been casting Highlanders, you haven't seen the narratives, but Fast Forward's been a team we've casted frequently because, you know, they're kind of, I guess, overperformed to expectations in the beginning of the season. And what we expected out of them then was we knew that their combo was pretty established, but we expected their flight to be one of the major weaknesses. And it turned out that, you know, in that, when they had over KD in that really close game against Irene that they barely managed to, you know, lose, their flight was doing really well, performing against Eric, you know, against Fanny and Habib. And actually, the Ubers will get popped out right now. Fairly big ad for K&D, so Triple's gonna go down. Looks like he's the only frag so far. So yeah, not too much loss from Fast Forward as they uh, they will have Uber soon with ad. But yeah, we saw their flank performing really well, and particularly those three players, Rain, Wish, and Del Dongo, playing really together as a front, getting kills, you know, together, and forcing teams to, you know, respond to their aggression as K&D, or uh, Fast Forward, excuse me, is able to kind of uh, translate that Uber ad into point, which they still haven't used yet. Dressy only on 40%, means a 60% ad for Fixie. But yeah, ultimately, we saw them playing well. So if this was week one, and their flank was playing like this, I wouldn't be surprised. But it's just really amazing to me. I guess not amazing, but you know, disappointing, I guess you could say that. Their flank had shown that it can compete with KD's flank. They can compete with Irene's flank, but they're just not showing up today. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any question. I didn't you know, I play with these players. They're all fantastic. But here we go. Triple bonnet. Oh! Down goes the medic. Call the sizzle. That was a three or four player suicide. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what a textbook suicide wave looks like. You have the spy from behind, a couple players over at the top, and they didn't even have time to react. So Nursey's sitting on that 100% Uber charge, ready to go fix. He's not up for another couple seconds. Exile as well as Wish holding a little bit forward, trying to force him to get early ground here. Exile going down and pretty low. It looks like Nursey's starting to walk her way up. Looks like she's going to go through the valley side. Uh, Del Dongo going for a decloak, but gets found out very early. And so uh, looks like they're going to do this, but Candy's also been very prickly about not Ubering. No, they're going to Uber aggressively here. They have the advantage, seem to do a good job blasting the back, but the big thing is they're going to come down with the point, and with only about 28 seconds left, guess it's not good. Rain going to bomb in, gets denied. What can Fox 4 do in the final moments? Yeah, more importantly, Bigsy went down, and that bull found the pipes on her in that jump. Same thing as before. We saw that three man sack come in, but honestly, it could have been a one man, as bull was the only person to have damaged Bigsy during that. So, you know, the others were there definitely to kind of distract the other teammates, but we see bull basically finding Bigsy twice in a row. Fast forward will actually find a cap, and Paul's got to find a snipe onto Nurse. Zukima going down to Dongo, so Frax are going in fast forward's favor here somehow after losing that fight. Jacob's gonna get caught out too, so no stabs coming in for them. Exa taken out on flank by Oblivion. Fallen though on a 9 streak, gonna take out Scratchy. Etni going down, and it looks like fast forward's gonna find themselves a chance in this third round that I didn't expect them to be having. They finally have stabilized themselves. That's a good job. One thing that the heavy was not on the cliff, so that allowed fast forward to get cap time. The other thing is that they held the spy held aggressively across the point. And if you hold aggressively when you're capping the point, it forces the enemy team to have to commit to deal with you. And that's one thing that fast forward wasn't doing. They're so passive and when they're trying to get that capture time. So here we go. KD is starting to get him get themselves into position. Bull trying to walk across the point with Eric. He's gonna get his head taken off. Wish is going to go down kind of low here. Fixie uses the quick, quick. fix. Ooh, and, and actually, they're gonna get out damaged by the heavy, and yeah, that's that's gonna be the round. They, I can't see a chance for fast forward to get back into this, and I can't believe that a Tomislav out damaged a quick fix. Yeah, you know, I saw X XL sitting at about 80, but it's just because the heals weren't enough. You know, I've always been a huge proponent of that mini gun for people who may have remembered the uh, infamous Thor Sunshine strats back in. UGC, but I just think the minigun's so bad right now comparatively. You know, you don't have the scout movement speed being exclusive to it, and 
know, it builds faster, but ultimately, even in overtime, even if you do get it, you can't cap through it. So, not a fan of switching to it, unless you really just need to follow your demo, you know, kind of in a rollout. Um, but we will see this kind of last mid coming into place here. Not too much going on right now. Fest4 maybe realizing this is the last chance to take around. Rain starts things out, goes in for a big bomb onto Nursey. Gonna get some good damage on her. Her being brought down to 50. Etni's gonna bomb as well. Boat Soldier's trading. Spy's trading. Wish gonna be the kind of deciding difference right now. But KND not having good point presence. So the mid fight will continue to be stalled. Eric finally getting on it. Snipe gonna come out onto Oblivion. Exile going down though. There's the big frag. Bolt traded right back in return. So these teams are trading frags, but fortunately for KND, they're able to kind of get the better of it, get their heavy out onto point, and win the mid. Finally, actually, for the first time this round. Or no, they, they won the last mid fight just barely in that long, drawn out battle. Yeah, just uh, not quite working out for them, but Fixie is coming up to this 100% coming off the cliffside. Eldongo getting that aggressive position to get on that capture time with the help of Wish. And they actually shouldn't pop here. Now they're forcing Nursey to pop to defend this point. It's so incredibly close. And so now the blue side, actually, the offense is going to have the better Uber by about 40%. Yukina finally gets dropped out of it, eating a lot of damage, gets taken out. But Space goes hard scoping down, trying to find something. We'll find the heavy, going for more, but won't get anything else. Fall rain does go down as Eric's pushing back onto the combo class as Daldongo will pick up a nice pick as Nursey also got taken out there by a backstab of Daldongo during that uh, whole hullabaloo. And so this is a really good, solid play out of fast forward. They did a great job getting that pressure from the capture time, forcing Nursey to pop that way. You know, if you can't do it through damage, do it through the objective. And this is actually looking pretty good for fast forward right now, but let's see how they hold it. Nursey! Big snipe. Fallen continuing his absolutely dominating performance. Gonna take out Oblivion too. Bull and Etni going down. We see the sacks coming out, but Figzy is safe. Still at uh, 80 HP or so after all of that. So, you know, goodbye Fast Forward to get in there. You know, they got those two picks off of Fallen, who's having an absolutely masterful night right now. And then it feels like for the first time, you know, they didn't immediately trade someone back out after he gave them those picks. And they're able to transition it, you know, into a really strong Uber play. They come in and, uh, you know, take the point and they survive the sacks too. Nursey only at 40% due to that, and then, you know, another just sharp pick coming out of him. Means you might see another sack coming in. Triple going down might open that up. Good pick out of Space Ghost. They might not even go for the sack. They're just going to try to force this Uber out by getting aggressive. Bowl and Eric trying to get some presence up point. Rain going in actually, though, will take out Space Ghost. No, it wasn't even, it was just spam rockets. Uber will get forced, however, though. Wish chasing Nursey will get uh, Bowl, and he's on Nursey oh. in spawn. No! Oh, he's gonna get taken out at the but last Dongo? second. Pin to Dongo? This Dongo? No, okay. Oh. Oh, forces the Uber out of her, which, while not a kill, you know, with an Uber being forced back that far in spawn, might as well be the same thing. You know, eight second Uber, eight second respawn, it feels like. Jacob's gonna take out Exile, though, so no demo. And uh, still some respawns coming in on fast forward. Means that Candy should be able to take this point back. Tsukima's gonna go down, actually. Well, they're not, they're not gonna happens. hold on to it. That, I mean, that's just it. Nursey's gonna go down to half HP. They only they have four players down, and really, it's just the Sentry Gun to be able to hold this uh, aggressively. Bull behind the point with the Medic. The Sentry Gun will go down to Bull and Edney on that side, but if Wish plays this correctly, he can get some free capture time, but oof, getting sniped out triple is, and so Figsy does have an advantage here, but it's very, very slight. Hopefully they're keeping track because they should use this aggressively if they can, but Nursey, you can see she's already playing in main, ready to get out of this situation if needed. As Demento does get found out, XL for this, he gave me a decent amount of damage onto the enemy combo. They're going down incredibly low. Nursey, though, has that 100% ready to defend this. Will they be able to do this? But just a little bit of jostling from each side as Wish getting a little bit more capture time to help out his team. Yeah, Space Ghost was sitting uncontested on China there for about 20 to 30 seconds straight, which really just kind of curtailed any aggression. Eric's gonna get sniped out and the Uber will get popped off. Easily a, a better Uber for the defense, but no frags going over it means that Fest Forward may have the advantage in this post fight. Lots of point presence leads to means that they should be capping this soon. But no, Exile's gonna get taken out with a uh, with Bowl and Fixie. Fixie getting butter knifed actually by Jacob. The cap will go into Fest Forward's favor, but I fear they may have just only extended their own spawns as uh, Candy's gonna get numbers back in and hopefully onto the point before Fest Forward's gonna have the uh, bodies able to kind of compete with them. I mean, as unfortunate as that is, I mean, 15 seconds, given how the closest round is, very well may make the difference, but Space Ghost is going to pick up that frag on to Fallen. So no sniper here for the offense, trying to push onto the point for another about five seconds, plus that walk-up time. Also, Nursey, but a 40% advantage. Here comes in the bomb in, but who's next to the medic? 
that's going to be the Pyro easily defending that Nursing, not even taking a lick of damage as she's getting herself back up to the rock area to get a better hold. Nursing now on to 90%. Time is now tied, ticking in the favor of Candy. This is the round to win. This is match point for them. Can fast forward find something in their pocket to be able to push back onto the point? This is where they've struggled all game. Jacob getting caught out should make sure that nothing goes wrong. But yeah, Nursing still has 100% Uber, so they're either going to need a really good fight or a drop to come in on her. Pixie is still on Uber right now, it looks like, so no cheesy crits plays to come out. Lots of aggression coming out. Wish actually in rain, really deep. All went down, so no demo to kind of using this Uber, it will just be a scout Uber. Eric searching for frags with Oblivion. Biggs is going to get the pop off though. Again, a better Uber for offense, but going in, Dukima being brought low, will go down. Eric not going to die, taking out Exile actually, or baiting him into uh, the Wrangler from Exa. Space Ghost going down though means that no sniper should immediately reopen this. And uh, we are going to see roughly even Ubers coming in here. Slight advantage for Big Seed. As only about 30 seconds left, you know, fast forward probably has the best chance to take a round this game. We'll see what they want to do, but K and D, they're not sitting back. They're just trying to get aggressive right away, working off Uber Bowl, working forward across the point, just triple to defend us. Eric actually gets taken out there. Nice job. As Wish is coming up here, Rain doing a good job actually on that concrete side. A lot of damage onto the enemy flank players, but it's Oblivion pushing across the point. They need to contest this. The heavy is going down as Demento picks up a frag. I believe, actually, no, he didn't, but Fallen does pick up a frag himself sitting on the concrete side. 12 seconds, Bull goes down. Four seconds, here Fixie we go. Gets stabbed. Onto the point. Oh, Fixie got stabbed with 98%. Nursey's going to be hitting 95, soon going to have Uber, and it looks like that's going to be it. Kane, or actually no, Wish goes in, maybe he tries to get some last second cap time, Uber will get point popped out, Dildongo on point, doing his best to extend this, gives time maybe, no, Satan's oh. not able to get on, and tragedy for fast forward strikes as uh, Jacob gets, you know, one last lap onto Figzy, takes her out at 98, and you know, if uh, fast forward had Uber there, who knows what happens, but Unfortunately, nothing uh, nothing will come of it, and Fest or uh, KD, excuse me, is going to take the 4-0 here in Week 9 and secure themselves a top two finish in the regular season, I believe. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, I think they're pretty much, it's just going to be them and Irene in the final uh, stretch of it, but with their current lead, I believe Irene actually just finished their game. I was looking over at Banny's stream real quick. 4-0, uh, I'm pretty sure, so both teams uh, picking up a clean win for the uh, top two teams. Let me kind of quickly see what we're looking at here. So that's going to put uh, the k d at 21 points and Irene at 0.3 points, just lower than them. So that is basically as close as you can get, but more than likely k d will secure their spot in the grand finals after their match. Now, who's their match in the final week? They're playing, they're playing BV on Steel, which, right. well, you know, you BV is probably the best match you could hope for at this point, maybe other than the faction who's a bye week, you know. Mm -hmm. BV's only round this season did come against Fast Forward on Steel. And, you know, it's not, I wouldn't say it's likely, but if you're going to see BV take a round off of K&D, Steel would be the map where that's going to happen. So should be uh, should be interesting to see how that turns out. But yeah, I would I would favor a K&D 2-0, knowing that, you know, that kind of grand final spot is at place. They're not going to be messing around. Yeah, and so looking, now kind of switching our glance over to the logs here, I, I want to kind of focus first, just I want to look at the those that second half logs before uh, we kind of look at the full combined here. Fallen went huge in the second half, uh, 28 frags. The, comparatively, Space Ghost only got 10, so that is pretty much 3 to 1, basically. He had 702 DPM, 702, that is insane. For the losing team. Yeah. Like, crazy, crazy. Yeah, and it wasn't just, you know, the SVS actually wasn't even that, you know, just one-sided. It was two to one in his favor, which means he's just picking up kills on everyone. Five kills on Eric, six kills on Bull, four kills on the Engineer, you know, just killing everyone. And whenever you see a sniper with a very balanced kill spread, that's when you know he's really popping off. Because sometimes you'll see... uh Sometimes you'll see, you know, snipers get a lot of, like, just sniper and mid kills, and that means they're just kind of, you know, scoping only for them. Fallen's just indiscriminately murdering K and D. And it's just, it feels like it's a shame that, you know, they weren't able to translate that into any rounds. Since... Yeah, it's, yeah, it was close. I mean, even just looking at the, the kill frag totals, it's it was 92 to 91 in the second half with 36,000 damage to 38,000 damage. So actually, fast forward had about 2,000 more damage, but one less frag than the enemy team. Uh, and also, Nursey had four more charges than Figsies in, in that round. So, you know, again, it just like, it seemed like Nursey only died three times in that second half compared to the seven times of Figsy. So, I mean, really, 
that's kind of what the game comes down to. I, I think in that second half and overall, as I kind of look at these combined stats now, Nursey died five times uh, in the full game compared to the 13 of, of Figsy. And, and that, I mean, that's kind of like, like your team can pop off and obviously like Fallen was going huge. Demento got a little bit more mute, a little bit more average, I should say. A good, he, he was a good spy. I mean, obviously, but he popped off in that first round, second round, uh, you know, or second half, I should say. He was doing a, just a little bit more normal, but I think just losing Figgy, Figsy so many times, I mean, there's only so much you can do if you just don't have the Uber charges to kind of compare to their team. And, you know, I think that second half, though, really, like, it, it's hard. Like it, the frags were close to each other. The damage was close to each other. You know, it just really comes down to just like positioning and teamwork. And when did you make the pushes and were they right? And when were your deaths? Cause that's really the matters. Like stats don't matter at that point when things are so close in a cough game, like stats don't make much of a difference. Cause it's like, yeah, this person did that. This person did that. But ultimately they're so close. It really just comes down to who pushed at the correct times. When did you use your retards? When did you lose your medic? Did you protect your medic? Um, but it seems like if Fixie stays alive in this game, this might be fast forward's game. At least it, they might've turned it around in that way. Yeah. Or at least, you know, taken a round or two, which, you know, could help them potentially in seeding at this point. I think they were pretty reliant on a four O it felt like in order to really, you know, maybe make a splash, especially with Irene, you know, taking the four O as well. Had Apollo Dash won that match, you know, taking some rounds off of them, we'd be in a different scenario. But, you know, it, it does end up being a 4 0 on both ends, which, you know, I guess is some kind of comfort for Fast Forward, knowing that even if they had taken some rounds, they probably wouldn't be, uh, you know, in that much better of a spot. So, some, I guess, not even a silver lining, more just like a bronze lining, maybe you could say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just. I mean, these are these feel like the toughest losses too, because you see some games like when we watched K and D versus Irene back on Cascade, where K and D had almost no shot. And after that, you look at it and you say, okay, you know, our our plan from the start was wrong. Like we just we shouldn't have picked this map. No one knows what we're doing on it. You know, we can kind of chalk this one up to just us not knowing and making a mistake in the pick ban. This one is just so painful though, because you have all of these what ifs where. You know, what if Figsy doesn't get stabbed here? What if, you know, Rain and Daldongo are able to coordinate just one more bomb and get a kill onto Nursi at a certain point? You know, they were so close on so many of these rounds and it almost just, you know, my heart goes out to them because they really put up a fight, especially towards the end. And, you know, we see that adaptation that Fessor has been good at showing. It just didn't happen to be enough tonight. Yeah, I mean, the other thing, too, is that I, I might say is that just k and I know them historically to be very good. I, mem- I remember back in the day when I played at a high level in Invite, and K&D was just phenomenal at, at, at product. You know, it's just something they did very, very well. Uh, it just kind of comes down to their play style. They were kind of just a little bit of a slower, a little bit more of a passive team, and kind of, like, it's really hard to, to attack that. Because if you be hyper-aggressive into a passive team, you see exactly what happened a lot in this game, where it's just like, well, they're just going to reflect you. The pyro's going to, they're going to deal with you. You have to be really smart about how you attack it. And, you know, given that this is actually the map that Fast Forward chose, Fast Forward had a choice between Warm Tick and Product. And honestly, I might have gone for Warm Tick in this situation, because... Rain is a phenomenal bomber. We see that. And I feel like that might have been a little bit more something for him to work with, you know, versus, you know, product. He was a little bit, uh, I don't know. He's, he's just kind of struggling in that situation. So either way, I mean, I definitely think that if these teams meet inside of the playoffs, which is, you know, very possible, um, you know, I maybe don't pick product again, going against KD as much as you feel confident in it. Um, it just seems like KD is going to get the better of you, and, and maybe one of the other maps will uh, allow you to be able to do it. Because as you said, their 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 flank you was a concern earlier in the season, but they're good. I think it's just their timing, you know, their bombs and their timing and everything just weren't there. And I think just watching the demo through one time really as a team would kind of show them where they're going wrong, uh, kind yeah. of with those smaller things and, and being able to protect uh, the medic. But anyways, uh, Elto, any kind of final thoughts you want to, you want to give on the match logs or any shout outs? Uh, just want to, you know, I guess say to fast forward that, you know, the, the opportunities are there. And I was kind of saying that before, but you just mentioned the timing and like their flank has had that timing in the past. You know, it's not like, it's not like this is, you know, some kind of, standard performance this isn't decidedly strong underperformance coming out of them we've seen them have that timing together we've seen some really nice plays from rain and dongo together coming out and you know just kind of decimating enemy combos we saw that against the same team 
on Swift Order, which granted they were missing a few of their mains, and Oblivion being on Pyro, I think, is a really major boon for this team. You know mm -hmm. how much protection he's able to provide the already, you know, hard to kill Mercy, but like Man, I mean, I think if uh if K and D does get that 3 0 next week, they will be first seed, meaning that first forward will have to go through Irene in order to face them. But you know, I think mm -hmm. I think we saw tonight Fallen's, you know, an incredible sniper. And I know he's, you know, not always, he's a very modest guy and he's not going to tell you how great he is. But I think tonight really just, you know, was unreal, the performance from him. The amount of times he was just able to consistently find kills was crazy. And I think if Fest4 is able to play around that a little more, they'll be able mm -hmm. to go far. You know, take that warm pick pick, you know, take that sniper map because, you know, you got to You got to play around that. Like, that's your big advantage. You know, I think a lot of times the only... I guess places teams are going to find advantages against KD maybe is in that sniper spot as Space Ghost isn't the, you know, top frag 700 DPM sniper that, you know, other Fallen or a Boar type could be. So, you know, you got you to play to your strength, and I think that could be theirs, so. Yeah, well, we will, we will see. I mean, I think the simplest way to put it is that Fast Forward is a team that is has every chance to potentially sneak into the Grand Finals and really put up a great fight. You know, I don't think they're necessarily the team that you would say they're they're the best right now, but I think any given day, if the players step up, play well together, I think they could take down any of the top teams. And I think that's something you can say without doubt. But it's a question of, like, they, in order to take on the top teams, need to play at their absolute height and in intelligence of play. And I don't think we saw that there tonight, except for maybe, you know, some, you know, big players did step up. But every single member needs to step up and, and play in that way. I think for them to have a chance against these these top teams, but they can absolutely do it. And if you said you know fast forward one at all, I'd be surprised, but I wouldn't be that surprised. I'd be like, all right, yeah, I, I believe that. I, yeah, I could definitely. I could believe that. So uh, any shouts you want to give there, Alto? Uh, I think just shout out, you know, shout out to Usyk coming in, casting some HL. Huh. No, I've been absent from Prolander, but I hope to be returning soon. And uh, shout out to Dolphin as always, whose camera work is impeccable again as always. So hearts in the chat for him. Yeah, shout out to to my boy Fallen, you know, who uh, had 700 DPM and didn't win a single round. That's pretty brutal. That's uh, that's an insane, one of the most insane performances I've seen on a sniper. And uh, hopefully your team will get your stuff together and be able to, to crush it later on. As I said, of course, always a dolphin. And uh, don't forget to tune in. Uh, we should have a cast tomorrow night, probably 930 Eastern. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, it should be a pro lender matchup as we are very close to the end of the regular season as well. Uh, but I think that will be it. Uh, thank you so much, Alto, for having me out here. And Dolphin for doing the amazing camera work, as always. I love you guys so much. Uh, and I hopefully should be back out here for some of the playoff games as well, if they'll have me. Uh, but either way, another great match in the books. And we will see you next time. Attention, all Team Fortress 2 gamers. The Heavy is in real trouble, and he needs your help to steal the intelligence from the opposing team. Now to do this, he's going to need a pocket medic and a couple of sandwiches. So to help him, all he needs is your credit card number, the three digits on the back, the expiration month and year. And you're also going to have to trade Psycho all your hats from your inventory. But you have to be quick so that the Heavy can capture the intel and win the game. For all of you epic gamers. Yeah!